Here is the current noise model for an op amp. It can be simplified as a single differential current source. The input bias current noise density can be found in the data sheet. It's usually very small, in this case, 2.5 femtoamps per square root hertz. The broadband bias current density is the input bias current noise density times the square root of the bandwidth. That comes out to 1.247 picoamperes. The noise voltage generated is the broadband bias current density times the parallel combination of RF and R1, which is 990 ohms. You may remember this from the input bias canceling resistor video using the parallel combination of the resistors. This yields 1.234 nanovolts RMS. Let's wrap this up by calculating the root sum squares of the device total noise voltage. The noise voltage due to the input bias current noise and the resistor noise. This results in 3.22 microvolts RMS. This is all relative to the input. To get the output noise, simply multiply by the gain of 101, which yields 325.2 microvolts. We then multiply by 6 to get the peak to peak estimate, which is 1.95 millivolts peak to peak. I created a spreadsheet to do all these noise calculations. I hope you may find it useful. It has a pie chart that shows the individual contributors of the device noise, the current noise, and the resistor noise. It's obvious by now reducing the resistance values of the resistors will reduce the noise. My initial selection of resistor values was quite arbitrary. Going too low has its problems. If you are using the inverting configuration, R1 will set the input impedance, which is a challenge. Most low noise applications are the first in the chain amplifier for a sensor or a transducer. It's usually best to use the non inverting configuration to take advantage of the high input impedance. Lower resistor values will increase the load on the output, which can affect slew rate and large signal gain. Reducing the resistors by a factor of 100 only yields a reduction of resistor noise by a factor of 10 being inside the radical. Reducing bandwidth will reduce noise, obviously, but it has a square root effect as well. These analysis techniques are only applicable to intrinsic noise and not extrinsic. Extrinsic noise examples are power supply ripple, radiated fields like RF signals, and AC power line radiation, and also ground loops. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.